Camera ain't gotta go in the Xbox. It had to have been that. And let me try, I'm gonna hang you up and call you back. And that maybe it has to be set with the headset. I can't even hear myself talking, so whatever. Okay, that should fix it. Let's make sure we're good to go now. I should have fixed it, I hope. I hear some movement going on over there. Yep, that fixes it. So we are, uh, sorry about that. Um, we tried to do some new things here, but it didn't seem like it was working. So. Uh, to help with the audio so yeah so we got a lot of stuff to go over here tonight for ring the bell um let's kind of jump into we'll do some recaps of the episodes uh later in this episode uh kind of jump into some uh hot topics uh going on you know we got uh revolution coming up moxley versus jericho you know we talked about before 
what champion, you know, which one could be a better champion for AEW at this time. Because, you know, in my opinion, it's an important time for AEW. they got to find the right champion that's going to help further not only the company, but the show, the brand, um, and make helping it move forward. You know, Jericho, I think, has been the perfect starting champion. But now the, de- the debate becomes, do they keep the belt on Jericho? Or should we try giving it to Moxley a little bit? Um, in my opinion, you know, who makes a better champion? I think moving forward, even after Revolution, I'm going to still go with Jericho. I think, you know, taking the belt off of Jericho and giving it to Moxley, it's going to take away from everything that Jericho is building as a, as, as a champion now. You know, they got the late champion going on. They got the great inner circle storyline going on. And I think it makes for a better storyline having Moxley chasing that title and going up against the the pack of five or six of them that are in the inner circle, and and and, and the Sammy Guevara, and, and and going up against Jericho and and, and Hager, and they got the whole. It's always them against him, and um, you know when you add in now giving the belt to Moxley. I mean, I guess they can maybe keep it up for uh, maybe a month or so, but. What are they going to achieve by having the title on it for so long? I don't know what he helps bring to AEW to further expand them and further expand the title. I just I think it's a hard sell. I think it's something that still sticks with Jericho to keep the title on him, to keep him being the face of AEW. And as they're kind of going through it, like I said, just, they're trying to establish themselves as a brand and as, as a show. And I, I, I think I think there's really very few positives of taking the belt off of Jericho. What do you think? Although I, you know, I love Chris Jericho more than anybody on AEW. I think the the biggest thing moving forward, and I think what they're going to do is put the belt on Moxley. I think they're they're going to have him uh, beat Jericho at uh, Revolution. I think that's just an obvious. And the reason I say that is because. They've already taken out Cody Rhodes facing Jericho. He can no longer ever face him again. So you open up the door to have Cody Rhodes have the, the, the chance of being the AEW champion when John Moxley has it. And I think it sets up for perfect timing. Cody Rhodes finishes his rivalry with MJF, has the opportunity to now face Moxley, who is the AEW champion, uh, to set up for, you know, I think would be an amazing rivalry. We have never seen... Cody Rhodes versus John Moxley, or if we have, we haven't seen this version of it. And I mean, honestly, I think the two of them are in their primes. It would set up for a really great couple of months uh, between the two. Uh, I think Chris Jericho, like you said, has done a great job. I just think it's time. You know, they could still have many great storylines with the Inner Circle with Jericho versing whoever. Maybe Kenny Omega. Maybe you know uh, someone else. But right now, I just feel like it, it's time to, to pass the belt to someone else to set up for different storylines, to freshen it up. You know, I think, and I agree a little bit with the fact that, you know, you, you open up now, you can kind of bring in Cody Rhodes a little bit if Moxley does win the title. But I think, what you know, I just, now this is the first time Moxley and Jericho are fighting on pay-per-view. So if, if history serves me correctly... They normally like to get two or three pay-per-views out of this. So my opinion would be at Revolution to have Jericho win in some kind of cheap fashion. Or but, t- what's that? But AEW doesn't have as many pay-per-views as true. WWE. I just, I guess I see very little, I, I guess, I don't know. I, I, I agree that it can open up some potential, but let me ask you a question. If Jericho loses, what do you do with Jericho? I know you mentioned Kenny Omega, but like, was, on a serious note, what do you do with... Because remember, they've already kind of fought a little bit before overseas, so it's kind of like... It's kind of been done already, Jericho and Omega. But yeah, like, but not everybody has seen Kenny true. Omega versus Jericho here true. in the States. But in your opinion, uh, as a Jericho fan, and you could, what would you do with Jericho if he loses? I think a lot of it has to do with the landscape of AEW. So if you know Hangman Page and Omega lose against the Young Bucks at Revolution... You know, do those two guys split up? Are those two are those two guys going to be in a rivalry? Are they still going to be together? Who's going to be out there? I mean, shit, you don't even know. Matt Hardy might even come to AEW. You don't even know if there's going to be another wrestler that signs with AEW and makes their 
debut at Revolution because, re like I said, Revolution is going up against WrestleMania technically. Pretty much, um, yeah. That's going to be the closest pay per view is to WrestleMania. So this is their big pay per view of 2020 right now. So I was thinking uh, they're probably going to have some guys come out that they've signed or whatever the case may be. But that doesn't mean that there isn't already guys there that could face Jericho. You have Pac, who is a really good wrestler. Uh, like I said, Kenny Omega, Hangman Page. So it's not like they don't have the talent to do that or even break up the inner circle. There's there's some things that you can do, but I agree. You know, Jericho should be the main guy, and maybe he will be. Maybe they'll add a stipulation where Jericho can face Cody if, you know, Dean Ambrose or uh, John Moxley has the championship. It, you, I don't know. I, it's going to be tough, you know, kind of setting him up for another rivalry, but... I think what's they. I think the rivalry between John Moxley and Jericho has ran its course by Revolution. So, so again, I'm not too familiar, and maybe not anyone's too familiar with AEW pay per views. But did you get the fact that Revolution is going to be their WrestleMania? Are they? Is that their big, 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 big one? I mean, they're setting up a lot of the matches. There are setting up to be huge. Right. Like you have the Young Bucks versus. Omega and Hangman Page. That's a big match. You have Jericho versus Moxley for the championship. That's a big match. You know, uh, because Cody beat Wardlow this week in a steel cage match, now he gets to face MJF at uh, Revolution. Now, that may not be a big match to most people, but leading up to it, it, it has been, it has lived up to the hype, and it, it, is, it will be a big match. You have the debut of Jake Hagar versus uh, Dustin Rhodes. I think that's a big match because, you know, Jake Hagar is making his debut and I think this is the first time he's wrestled in, like, two years. So they really are setting up for a lot of big matches. So, I mean, with them only doing four pay-per-views, I think, a year, it only makes sense that this would be the, the closest one to their WrestleMania. That's fair. That's fair to say. I, I guess my, my question was I wasn't sure if they were matching it up to the WrestleMania size-wise or if they are just matching it up during the timeline of how close they are together. But really, Revolution's really end of February. And I feel like it would be impossible to match it up size-wise at this point. You know, maybe later on they could um, if the company gets bigger. It's just I feel like right now this is going to be their closest one to WrestleMania, so they're going to try and push it, you know, as close as a WrestleMania caliber pay-per-view. Do you remember the name of the first one that they did? Uh, I do not. I wonder, because if they're if Revolution to be one of them, I'd rather, I'm, trying to, uh, I'm trying to think of the names that they had so that... I mean, have they had one since they started in October? I believe they had um, they had their first pay per view um, a while back. I just I think it was called their next one is called Double or Nothing. I don't know what their last one was called though. They have Double or Nothing, Full Gear, All Out. They had Full Gear, might have been it. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like it was. They had it. November November ninth, two thousand nineteen was full gear. Revolution. That was their last one. Yeah, Revolution is February 29th, Chicago, Illinois. And then they got Double or Nothing May twenty third. And then they got Freighter Fest, Fight for the Fallen, and All Out. So it looks, it looks like those are the ones. Right now they got one, two. It looks like they got seven on here. I don't know they only do four major. I don't know which ones they'll cut out, but maybe they, they got one in June, July, and August. I'm guessing one of those will go. But um, yeah, so it looks like they did full gear. All out. I do remember all out. All out was the one that kind of got that kind of got the AEW kind of. That was like their first event before it actually started. Um, yeah. So I think all out will probably be one of them as well. And I'm they pretty had, sure that was the one th that they had opened up box office tickets for and it sold out in like an hour and that's when they knew that they had something you know it's funny do you, do you remember what the main event for that one was all out uh, I'm pretty sure it was Cody versus I'll give you a hint I, I want it was for it was the first match for the AEW World Championship versus Omega no it was Chris Jericho obviously versus Adam Page so Adam Page was in the who's, first ever AEW Championship match. He lost. Who's Adam Page? Hangman Page, right? Oh, his name was Adam. His name right? was Adam. I'm only guessing. Hangman Page, yeah. 
See how I said Dang. it twice, no problem. Now I'll say it later and I'll get it all jubbered, jubbered up. But, um, yeah, so, you know, and, and um, one of my points that I was going to say with Moxley winning is I would love to see Paige back in the title picture. I actually kind of like Paige. I think he's actually kind of, obviously they're having him hanging in there with Omega with the tag titles right now. You know, keeping him in the in the mix, but I kind of like Paige. I think he'd be a great AEW champion. Um, and I guess I didn't realize until I just saw it here that he was in the first ever match. So obviously AEW thinks highly of him. You know, to put him in the first ever AEW match and then also have him in the tag titles. But I know, kind of back to what the debate was. I I, I just I feel like they had they can draw out Chris Jericho and Moxie a little bit more. I feel like they can do a little bit more. I think they, you know, getting away with a Chris Jericho cheap win is probably something that they can do. Give three or four months of Jericho as the title, and then hand it off to him and kind of get some different storylines going in the summer. Because, um, I mean, I'm guessing Double or, Noth- Double or Nothing would be their next pay-per-view. It's already scheduled May 23rd. So, really, you got March, April, and May. Can they draw out three more months with Chris Jericho as a champ? Probably. My I I don't I don't think so I, I think I, I think they wouldn't be able to because you know they've already done so much with Chris Jericho in the past I don't know four months that they've had AEW that they've shut some doors like they have with Cody I mean they've shut some doors on you know some rivalries that they could do with Jericho because it's already been done I think opening it up with Moxie will open up a lot of doors, a lot of opportunities for the company as a whole. I know. I, I don't know if I'm shocked or if really I'm disgusted. You know, you don't have many people left to root for anymore. Look at Matt Hardy. Gone. Jeff Hardy, where is he? And now you're shooting on your boy Chris Jericho. You got three guys. There's always been three guys that, that Tyler Hayes has loved. And from, from what I've known in WWE, he has his one, like Stone Cold, obviously. But he has three guys that he's always cherished. Am I wrong? Matt Hardy. Uh, I mean, Matt Jeff Hardy, Hardy. Would be, Matt Hardy would definitely not be top three. Okay, but he's it would, in, easily, it would easily go Jeff Hardy... Maybe Jericho and Stone Cold, but like Ric Flair is definitely in the mix there too. I love Ric Flair. Well, obviously, but what I'm saying is you love the Hardys in one way or another. I love another. the Hardys, but I honestly Matt Hardy to me is like a redheaded stepchild. Like I'd prefer <laughs> Jeff Hardy. Well, he got treated that way, and his career ending in WWE he got pounded around by Randy Orton. But the fact is, I heard by the way, I heard Jeff Hardy is possibly returning relatively soon. Side note. I, I mean the. That. I don't know if you saw last night um, or two nights ago on on Raw, they had that ruthless aggression thing come out on WWE Network, and Jeff Hardy was all over it. And you, I mean, you wouldn't think that he would have been like the center, the centerpiece of that that time frame in like the 2004 to 2010. But I mean, he did win the title. He, well, that he was, was a great... classic Jeff Hardy Undertaker showdown. That's when they made Jeff Hardy the champ. Remember? That's that's when Jeff Hardy finally made his way into the solo series of WWE. Yeah, but he didn't beat the Undertaker. Well, he he fought the Undertaker. He was the champion, though, right? I mean, Jeff Hardy was really like back in two thousand one when Jeff Hardy faced the Undertaker in that ladder match on Raw. That was when he first like made a name for himself as a solo competitor, and you know you had Hulk Hogan like. I think it was 2002, actually. You had Hulk Hogan, like, backstage, like, oh, that kid's got a career on him, brother, and shit like that. But, I I mean, I think he'd be, if I'm mistaken, I feel like he had, wait, test me. It was 2000. Well, he left for a period. He left for a I period. I think it was 2007 when he won it, or 2008. No. 2006? You, you want me to give you the timeline? No. You you, you, what year was it? That he won the when world title? Went, Yes, 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 yes. His biggest career was in three years, 2006 to 2009. No, I'm not asking that. I'm saying when did what year did he win the title? 2008. Which is exactly what I just said. Mm, you kind of said 2000. You're all over the board, really. I said 2008 you're kind of all over the, the board. You were talking 2001 I said 2008 for a or 2007. Minute. You were talking. And then I went down to 2006 because you said, no, no, no. He you're beat. kind of all over the board. <laughs> Who did he, uh, no. I want to say Edge, but I know he didn't beat Edge. I gotta look. Hang on. Thank you. Hardy lost his WC, WWE Championship to Edge 
in 2009. He lost it to Edge. At Armageddon, yep, at Armageddon, Hardy beat Edge and Triple H in a triple threat match to capture the WWE Championship for his first world championship. I would, I would, I'll take half right on that. Quite an interesting turn of events. He left for a while, came back in 2006. Well, remember, he went to TNA for whatever reason for two years. Because TNA was hot at the time. Returned to WWE in 2006, won the Intercontinental Championship 2007 left or then won the world title in 2008 and by the end of 2009 he was gone <laughs> gone yeah. adios because he, he didn't wait, return to wwe did, again didn't he make a second appearance he made a second appearance too in wwe when he left again because he he was in a rivalry with cm punk and he had some sort of title at the time i I believe it was like the Intercontinental. Intercontinental. No, it was, that's when he left fighting. He he left fighting CM Punk. That's when he left. Yeah. He lost the title but, to CM Punk and then left. That's it. Yeah. But um, what I find interesting is that he left in 2009. He didn't come back. I mean, we were actually there when the Hardys came back WrestleMania in Orlando, 2017. 17? He. I didn't realize he was gone from 2009 all the way to 2017. I thought he came back in the middle somewhere, but no, he didn't. He was all he was all uh, TNA for seven years. Well, I didn't realize he was in TNA for seven years. Phew. But either way, your boy right here is shitting on Chris Jericho. He's the AEW. I'm not necessarily he doesn't have, shitting on. You're, him. you're I'm saying just he saying... doesn't deserve to be the champion. You only got so many wrestlers you can cherish these days. I'm just. I'm just saying Le Champion is a gentleman when it comes to being a wrestler, and he knows when the right time is up, he needs to let it go and give it give the opportunity to boost someone else. And Moxley has always looked up to Jericho. He's he's viewed him as a mentor. He's viewed him as someone he looks up to and that he got got into wrestling because of him. Okay, now you're getting Jericho emotional. Knows that. You're getting emotional now. You're I'm just saying Jericho knows this, and Jericho sees Moxley, he sees a future in him, he sees the future of AEW. You like how I just went full circle with that? Future of AEW with John Moxley. All I'm saying is, you're a Jericho-holic, and you're shooting on him, uh, and you don't sometimes have many... You gotta, sometimes you gotta let let him go to see if he'll come back. The only, thing, the only thing that could be better than this is watching Jeff Hardy come back and getting squashed, too. And you have no one to root for. I have no one to root for. Well, I got Matt Hardy going to AEW if that happens, which I think it will. Honestly, if <laughs> Matt Hardy went to AEW and Jeff Hardy went to AEW, that might be the greatest thing ever for me. Because I honestly think AEW puts out a very good product, and I think that those two would flourish there. Could you imagine a title picture for AEW with Jericho? And Jeff Hardy, Tyler wouldn't know what to do with himself with those two people. I fighting. honestly wouldn't, and I think that would be one of the greatest matches of my life if I could see that. AEW, if you're watching this Ring the Bell podcast, it is February 26, Wednesday at 5:30. I'm asking you, I'm not asking, I'm begging you to sign my boy Jeff Hardy, take him from the blue brand or the red brand, whatever brand he's on on WWE, Smack bring him to AEW, have him fight his way all the way up to for, to Chris Jericho's level. And have a title match, cage match, TLC match. It doesn't matter. It would be huge. Well, there you go. So Tyler thinks Jericho should lose the title. I think AEW better with him having the title. What do you know? Do I think no, 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 no. Now, do I think AEW is great with him having the title? Absolutely. But when the time is up, the time is up. The jig is up for Chris Jericho. He knows it. Well, let's keep the title picture going and let's jump into WWE a little bit. Who do you think right now, I don't care if we're talking Universal title or if we're talking WWE title, or I'll even throw in NXT Championship because it's it's almost considered an identical brand and a, uh, a working um, show now. Out of those three, well, give me a couple. Who do you think deserves to be in the title picture right now in WWE that may not be there as we speak? Who do you think deserves to be in the title picture right now? Um, I mean, I would say Kevin Owens, honestly. I see, I see the guy he's, you know, putting out every night. He's great on the mic. He's hilarious. Uh, you know, the only thing that I don't like is how he stole the Stone Cold Stunner. But, you know, I, I think that he would be a great heel or face, honestly. He's good at both. 
uh, with the title. And I think that I, I honestly do think that they're setting him up for it in the future. But I think right now, why not have him as the title holder? When he was a universal title holder, he was a great he was a great uh, title holder. He was a heel. I mean, they could obviously try him out as a face. I think he would still be great. Um, and they have so many opportunities to set him up for great rivalries in, on Raw. They have so many uh, so many good wrestlers on there. So I, I would have to say Kevin Owens. I didn't know that we were going to say NXT, though. So I do have an answer for NXT after you answer. Well, I'll start with NXT, Finn Balor. Why isn't Finn Balor back in the title picture of NXT? Don't, I don't get it. See, I have someone completely different than Finn Balor. Who? Who do you have? Well, I want I want to hear who your who your uh, well, main Well, I mean, cast, I, I look, looking guy at is. the Raw roster. First off, I've come to the conclusion there's really no one good on Raw. Okay, and I understand why there's no one good on Raw because I, I've come to realize that Raw. Paul Heyman is a master, a master at developing talent and developing rosters on any show. And I sit here and I look at the roster of Monday Night Raw, and I just look at the people that that is are there that Paul Heyman can help build up and further expand within the company and the show. And I look at names like Ricochet, huge Paul Heyman guy, Ricochet. Drew McIntyre, Paul Heyman loves him. Uh, you look at Aleister Black, you look at... Uh, you know, Rey Mysterio, no. Randy Orton, how many times do we give him the title? Sin Cara, no. Shelton Benjamin, no. Uh, Luke Gallows, obviously Carl Anderson, AJ Styles are all in the group. You know, but when I look at Raw, and I'll, I'll give you one for Raw and SmackDown, but when I look at Raw, someone that I think deserves a shot at the title right now, AJ Styles. Maybe a, a stupid pick. It may be one that he's had the title... So but does he not deserve to be in the title picture on Raw? Honestly, does he not deserve to be in the title picture right now on Raw? No, I think he does. He's a great champion. I just think they're trying to find someone that's going to match up with him. You think Ricochet should be in the title picture right now? Yes. The Universal title picture? Or the United yeah. States one? Did I stutter there? Universal. And I'll tell you why. He is, he is a great talent. He's great in the ring. Um, he brings something that's different than what we've seen with the Universal title. He's a high flyer. He's an acrobat. You know, I think it. I think it freshens it up with having him fight for the Universal Championship. I would. I would say I think he he would be a great champion for a short period of time, kind of to to set up for someone else to take that from him, like a Kevin Owens. You know, we haven't really seen Kevin Owens versus Ricochet. Paul Heyman's a brilliant guy. So here's two different roads that Paul Heyman can do here. Paul Heyman can either A, give Ricochet the belt at Super Showdown. This huge story comes out. Ricochet, the new WWE champion, right? Right. Walks into Monday Night Raw and gets squashed by Brock Lesnar and the title taken away from him back on Brock Lesnar. It'd be a great storyline for a night. It gets so. What's going on here? Do we have bugs flying around, or what, what's going no, on? No, I had I had to turn the fan on because I'm getting hot. Well, you're wearing like some kind of what is it? 80 degrees in Tampa, Florida, and you're wearing a coat. It's a fucking raincoat. It's raining out. Give me a break. It's raining here, and I'm wearing just a polo shirt and a long sleeve. That's what I'm saying. Paul Heyman's a smart guy. They can either say, "Let's have Ricochet." Now, tell me this. Because you like good stories. You like the, the comeback stories. You like all those different movies, Rudy and all them, where all the comeback story came. I don't think I've ever watched Rudy Whatever. To start to finish okay? once. But the fact <laughs> of the matter is, having Ricochet win the title at Super Showdown, the world's going to go crazy. Social it's, media... It, but it's not going to happen. Well, okay, but let, not, let, let me not, finish. He's not going to win it. Let me finish. Rolls into Monday Night Raw, the big chip on his shoulder because he's a new champion, and gets squashed by Brock Lesnar in a rematch clause, and, and, and there you go. And he got, you know how much publicity he got? He's now a big guy. Now, or they can go down the route, I think you're going to go down, is just throwing him in the match is making him popular. It's a classic Paul Heyman move to throw a guy that may not have be that popular, but who is somewhat popular... Throw him in the match with, with Brock Lesnar. He's going to get some feedback out of it. Obviously, no one really expects him to win. So if he loses, oh well. He'll probably put up a good fight and somehow lose in a cheap fashion. 
but now he's become popular. And then give him the United States Championship. I feel like this is the first time I can actually say that I've liked any of your ideas that has to do with wrestling. I really do actually kind of like the first idea. Having him win at Super Showdown because, you know, you want to put on this big spectacle. You know, not everybody's going to watch Super Showdown, but if they do tune in, now they're seeing Brock Lesnar lose. They didn't expect that. Nobody's expecting that. But listen, WWE isn't that smart. They're not going to let that happen. They're not going to say, oh, let's take a risk. Let's have Brock Lesnar lose and then have him regain it at Raw and we're right back on on schedule. And Why not? Shit. I mean, what? This is this is the problem. They don't know. They're like, well, what's the worst that could happen for Ricochet? Well, nothing. He won the he won the championship. Now he's a relevant champion. He just had you know blame it on jet lag. He had <laughs> jet lag when he was in when he was in Raw, uh, flying back from Saudi Arabia and got fucking squashed by Bro- Brock Lesnar. But you know they're not gonna do that. You know that. It's I agree all about that. the money. You don't think that would generate a lot of money in twenty four hours and a lot of buzz? Ricochet the I new think champ. It would- I think it would help Ricochet out in the future, but, well, you know, for a company that, that constantly thinks long-term, they don't think long-term on the right things. Remember who were Paul Heyman people? Brock Lesnar's Paul Heyman, Ricochet's Paul Heyman, between Big those show? three, but he didn't hear it, between those three, <laughs> there was a Big Show reference, between those three, they're going to come up with a great storyline, and it would only make... You don't think Raw would have some of its best ratings ever the next time when Ricochet coming out as the new champ? It'd be huge! Well, I mean, it would set up, it just in case Drew McIntyre actually wins at WrestleMania, which I suspect he does, it would set up now a rivalry between Ricochet and Drew McIntyre because Ricochet lost the title, never got his rematch because Drew McIntyre is now facing Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, so you now set up for Drew McIntyre versus Ricochet, which... I've seen past matches with them. They always put on great matches. I think it would be a great rivalry. Do you think there's a possibility of a triple threat match? Ricochet, no, Brock Lesnar, not at Drew McIntyre? Not no? at WrestleMania. Two big guys in the underdog? I just feel like they they don't want to they don't want to do that out of a match at WrestleMania. They just want something straight up. And I think a lot of it has to do with they don't Brock Lesnar probably wouldn't be comfortable with it. I'm just saying they can make so many potential... But it would, it would be a good idea, though, and the reason being is Brock Lesnar technically wouldn't lose because they could always pin Ricochet. It's true. Um, let's switch over to SmackDown for a minute. The Miz. I don't understand why The Miz, with all the things he has going on, TV shows, uh, how popular he is outside of the... I don't understand why they don't give this guy the title shot. Not only, not only the title shot, but he should just be flat out the champion. I don't understand it. I'm 100% baffled with it. I get it he just fought the Fiend and Bray Wyatt not too long ago. He should be the champion. However, you do have Bray Wyatt. I think he makes an excellent champion. So I don't really know what I'm saying in long term. But I do think the Miz deserves to be You just to had to champion. put in your little plug for the Miz because he's I, the closest thing to the Rock Again, you. you said it, not me. This is now like the second time in a row you've mentioned The Rock first before I've mentioned The Rock. But keep going. Well, actually, I must say, I am rocking The Rock's gear. Oh, my God. Put the coat back up. I, I, I put a zip right back up. I, you know, what makes, let me tell you a little side exclusive, story, Exclusive, exclusive to Under Armour. You cannot buy it in stores. You haven't been able to buy it for the last four months. Your boy got it. Project Rock is the best. Let me, let me explain. Let me, let me. Well, who? You. No, I'm not. Let Dan me tell is you. super jealous no, right no, now. No, no. Dan is furious. He's a guy. He's about to say. I know exactly what he's about to say. This is a guy that when I go shopping with him, he always makes fun of me when I go into Under Armour. He never buys anything from Under Armour though. But The Rock comes out with something from Under Armour, and all of a sudden, he wants something from Under Armour. That's where exactly did, what you're about to say. Where, huh? did your, where did your neck go when you did that? Yeah, like, I was, you, that was my that was my damn voice because you have no neck because you don't work out. Where's them traps, boy? You know, th- by the two things. This is the second time that my physique has been called out here on the channel this week. Jackson Rainwater last night on Two V Tuesdays called me fat, and that will be addressed. He said I can't eat any of the little the little Debbie shortcake snack cakes they're doing next week because I'm fat. Dan is, Dan I, is that the king of snacks. This dude. Boy. I lived with Dan for two years almost, and this guy brought home snacks at least every night from Publix. Absolutely absurd. I have them right snacks, now. You, you, can, you skills, guess, you, Starbucks. <laughs> can you guess what I'm eating now? Right now, last night I was eating a pack of Chewy Nerds. 
You know the nerds? Actually, the, the yeah. little, the, you know the little box of nerds? They have them that have like a hard, chewy candy. You wonder why, you wonder why you have like to run jelly. two miles to get your physique down. Because, because I like eat, eating like, sweets at night. And you drink a lot of soda. I've, I've cut back on my soda. Okay, but back to, what my, back, back to what my point is. Let's get back on topic here. This guy right here, I went out and bought a pair of sweatpants, joggers to be specific, okay, from Under Armour. They had the Rock logo on. I go, this is actually pretty cool. This one, I don't remember the exact comment, but he came back like I was can so... I, can I get a Donald Trump fake news? Because <laughs> don't make me. You did me. not buy the Rock sweatpants. You just bought Under Armour sweatpants. No, I don't. I have a pair of the Rock sweatpants at home with the logo no, on them. Not. Okay, mark my words. I will send you a picture of them tonight. I am. Mar I got so a pair. You have to wear them on next week's podcast. Well, I can just go out and buy them. Out. More importantly, I'll just show you when I get home tonight to prove the point even further. I can go and buy a your pair IG between. Story as soon as you get home. I will get home as soon as I get home. I will show you a pair. And I remember you coming back out. You said something like. What a poser or some... You, you call me something when I got oh, him. I know exactly what I said because you don't work out. And the Rock's gear is meant for working what did out. What you say? Like actually <laughs> lifting, not running on the treadmill. The gym is the gym. What you, first off, the rule of the Whoa. gym is you... The rule That's of the gym is worm. not to make fun of people who go to the gym. Am That's I wrong with that? Worms are trying to open up. Not really. I mean, what are we at? Planet Fitness? Don't set off the lunk alarm. <laughs> I do go to Planet Fitness. It's very convenient to my location here at the mall. I go, to, or I just go outside and I run around the mall. It's exactly a Which mile. Which might as well just go outside, save yourself the fifteen dollars a month gym membership. Well, so you it's don't run twenty-eight on the degrees out, so it really deserves a purpose. I go that outside. helps your immune system, so you don't get sick. To run out in the cold. Yes. He spits a lot of things that I don't think he knows what he's saying. Look sometimes. it up on your, your handy-dandy little computer there. No, You're looking exactly. up all this other information. I'm just trying to help you out as a human being. And, and, and First, I got the first rock item before he did. But back to the other little side point we had there a second. I like eating sweets when I go home at night. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Then I pop over a bag. I do if you're, if you're trying not to be a fat piece of ass. I wouldn't call myself fat. I mean, you're definitely not in shape, I would say. Oh, sweet Jesus. Uh, uh, am I wrong? I think I'm just fine. So what's, what's getting you? How gonna... much can you bench? <laughs> how much can you squat? How much How much can you curl? I this is a guy who didn't even know. Mike, Mike we what's need you and Tom to take Dan to a real gym, a.k.a. the realest gym you guys have, which is the YMCA. And put some freaking iron on this dude, and let's see how much see he can do. I want stat lines. Who? Oh. If you ever want to play Cyclops in X Men, you'll have to get bigger biceps. First off, Cyclops <laughs> does not need to be uh, that he beefy needs looking. Least superhero from a comic book muscle physique. Cyclops is by far the best superhero out there. You want to know why, Dan, you, Mike? You want to know why Dan wears black and baggy? <laughs> because if not his more skin tight clothes. He would look like Flat Stanley. And we not wear some pretty tight clothes at times. He does wear some pretty tight pants. The top yeah, is yeah. always bad. Yeah, yeah. But that's, <laughs> you want to know why he does that is because he actually runs. So his bottom half of his body is is way out of proportion to the top part of his body. Yes, he does. Who, who you, what are you nodding your head for? <laughs> you don't know what he's talking about. I do. I was going to drop some knowledge. I'm just wondering if I should or not. What's the machine in the gym? That you used to jump on. The super cat. He didn't know what a super cat was, and we told him about him. Well, but I, but I've really used the super cat before I even knew what it was. My gym has one, and I've used it. It's called different things. I was I that. throw I throw two two plates on the super cat. Uh, here we if go. I'm trying to kill myself. <laughs> Just two. Just two. You I, should, I know. My... You should have seen the video he posted. His face was so red. Yeah, when he was like. And then, yeah, then, 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 then he quit put the get, things in because he couldn't do it. Dan, let me tell you, I'm, I'm getting heated right now. Here we go. As, <laughs> I'm getting closer to the camera. Let me tell you what I did prior to that. Here we go. That was my last, absolute last set on leg day yesterday. I did a mile on the treadmill. I'm glad he's doing legs. Up, just, to, just to warm up a mile. I did all the ellipticals you could think of, which must have been seven or eight different ellipticals. I did the Stairmaster for a thousand steps. Your ass couldn't even get up a thousand steps of stairs. You would die. By the way, I do the Stairmaster. By the way, who has the Stairmaster? I know. How many? How, how many? How many? How many levels did you go up? 
Probably like 60. Okay, I did 100 the other day. No yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, quick question. But did you only do the Stairmaster? Nope, I ran three miles, then did the Stairmaster. Yeah, yeah, but did you also put any weight on anything? I increased it up. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, did you actually put any weight on anything on your legs? No, you didn't. No. Exactly my point. You didn't do leg extensions, leg curls, uh, calf you raises. You, you, you didn't do any of that stuff. What? You'd be a freakish shape if you did that. His legs are already too big. He needs to get on the upper body. <laughs> <laughs> Dan would, Dan would uh, try and bench press 60s on the dumbbells and his arms would snap off. The no, oh, that's, that's, that's not fair. fair. That's not fair. It's, it's accurate. I did my well. I did enough of the time in the gym when I was in high school. Okay, and I can go. I, by the way, I can go out. I can tell when people lift in high school, Dan, and you definitely did not lift. Okay, and second, I can go out and drop four miles like that. No problem. I can drop no four miles like no, that you either. Can't. I can't. No, you on can't. Thursday no, nights at basketball. Can't. No, you can't. I don't know. I think that's fake news. Okay. I probably run eight miles in basketball. Yee! Anyways, let's let's talk about this. If you're gonna wear Project Rock stuff by Under Armour. At least go to the gym and, and do something that has anything to oh, do with weight. Oh, by the way, I, no, I also have a long sleeve shirt with the rock under arm. I'll show you that when I get home, too. I'll take a picture of Again, that. Again, long sleeves because you don't have biceps. So you're telling me that I purposely wear long sleeves and purposely use the color black to disguise the fact that <laughs> I'm what? I, I'm fat? No, you have no You're muscle. flat. With so you, you think there's a motive for me wearing black, and it has nothing to do with the fact that this store, How come every this time, store can I, can is black. Get a rewind? Can I get a rewind on every single podcast we've ever been on for Ring the Bell? Dan is wearing long sleeves. Do I not? Every single time. It's winter. I'm sorry. We don't live in Tampa where it's 85 degrees. You're Mike's wearing a coat, and it's Tampa, right Florida. <laughs> Mike's not wearing long sleeves right now. Okay. Mike, Mike would be sweating. And it, it, could be, it could be 60 degrees in this store, and Mike would be sweating his ass off. It's okay? 72 right now. It's 72. Because when you're carrying around that many muscles, that's what happens. You sweat, oh my Dan. God. <laughs> Can you get your head up his ass any farther and tell him he's all, he's all in oh, shape? Did you just call him Tom? Who? Maybe he's called Tom. No. <laughs> That's almost as worse as when Tom comes in and talks about uh, talks about the, the dream team and I'm lifting. Just, and, uh, I'm just, Dan, my main point is don't be coming at me about anything Project Rock or anything about lifting First in off, general. Uh, why are you calling it Project Rock? Just broke <laughs> why, why am is, I calling it what? Why are you calling it Project Rock? Because that's what it's called. Project Rock. That's the mm. line that Under Armour has created for The Rock. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Mm. Do you know that we have like five topics of debate? I think we've only been through one. We've been talking about... We've been through three. We've been talking about this whole weightlifting thing. The fact, all I simply said was you made a joke about me buying something that that had the rock logo on an under arm right now you're all about it i don't know how we got into me not weightlifting or me not working out at a gym or how i i may or may not eat because snacks the direct correlation i don't know how we got into project that. rock gear versus weightlifting and I, you do not do one of those two you things and Mike are being you buy dwayne the rock johnson's gear but you don't weightlift it makes no sense it's, I, like, it's like me buying rachel ray's cutlery i don't even cook in the kitchen that much there's no point. Really, you can buy cutlery. It's not gonna be. It's not gonna be Rachel. Whatever. It'd be something else. It was an example. Horrible I didn't know that example. You were, uh, queer eye for the straight guy. Uh, type of guy that's the cooking guy. Nope. I. You know what? I have a beautiful kitchen, and I don't think I've ever <laughs> once cooked in it at all. I don't think I've ever cooked in it. I got the granite countertops, the stainless steel plant, and I don't think I've ever cooked in my kitchen tacos before. Tacos in there all the time. Is that really cooking? Yeah, because you're. And I can almost guarantee that Dan's still eating red meat. Why would you fool? We you need red fool. Meat. Ground beef? That's very bad for you. Oh, what do you eat now? I'm sorry. Let's hear this one. Ground turkey. It's, it's so much better for you. I guess if you're cooking it. I'm not gonna stop eating tacos though. You know, I did say, you know, I had <laughs> <laughs> Side note, people watch me, I, I know, but you know and you know. We went we went to a sure, Christmas sure. party this year, our family Christmas party, and we, <laughs> we were eating dinner and they had turkey meatballs, right? Now, I, I was they were delicious. I was eating them and I really didn't taste anything different. TJ has this thing against, like, 
Katie makes like organic food all the time for dinner at home. TJ has like this meltdown anytime it's not like what he calls real food. And he was eating these meatballs. So, oh, these are so good. These are so great. And then Katie goes, you know, they're turkey meatballs, right? TJ goes, what the hell is that? And he threw it in the eye and he got so mad. I was dying laughing. Uh, we might have to get TJ on the show so we could we could hear his reasons behind eating healthy. He's Just like your reasons for actually lifting. He goes to the gym now all the time, TJ. I'm sure TJ can put up that. way more weight than you can by tenfold. Okay, another reason. I don't know why we're going down these road of insults. I, I, I didn't. Did, did I question your 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 working out? I just simply said. I had a rock shirt just before you did. Just don't. This is all I'm saying. Just don't come at me for wearing the oh, rock because I actually it. weight lift. What? Don't yeah. wear the rock if you don't weight lift. <laughs> he just wants you to say he has a better claim to the rock here than you do. First exactly. of all, not I don't only think that, so. and I have a far superior chest. Nope. For, <laughs> okay. Okay. First off, okay, I've always worn Under Armour for the longest time. <laughs> Okay, so that, that that makes me allowed to wear that. Second, I've been a, one of the biggest rock fans ever. Okay, so that's two reasons why I'm allowed to wear that. There, you there should be a poll put out on Facebook or any platform that says, should Dan we be allowed to wear the Rock's gear if he doesn't weight lift? Yes or no? I am checking no big time. I don't know now Dan's say. mad because he really loves Under Armour. I'm not he's mad. Pickle. He's, he's contemplating whether he wants to start weightlifting or not so he can actually wear the rocks. That, I, would, I would never do that. To, I would never go to the gym just so I could tell myself I can wear the rock clothes. That's absurd. absurd. I mean, based on, I mean, I'm just saying, based on genealogy, you do have a great, you would have a great bicep if you actually lifted. Tom has way bigger biceps than you. TJ has way bigger biceps than you, and he's triple your age. I mean... Kathy might even have bigger biceps. Than I think you. Kathy does. <laughs> she, she actually takes stuff out of the oven, cleans dishes. I mean, she does stuff around the house. You know, she works. She probably has a way better, uh, way better body structure than you. I mean, I know she does. Ah, ha, ha. <laughs> actually, Katie's the one that goes to the gym. <laughs> Are we ready to move on here I'm off this subject or wherever, whatever road we went down? You can pick it up next week. <laughs> so you were you were gonna you were gonna tell me who you thought at NXT? Matt Riddle. And I think it's primarily because of how well he has the attraction of the fans. Um, I think he would make a great. I think he would make a a different type of champion. And because he has that, like, laid-back, like, bro, like, weed-smoking type of persona, I think it would be interesting to see how he uh, would handle the championship. And I think he'd be put in some really good rivalries, you know. I would love to see him up against Adam Cole, up against Maso Ciampa, Keith Lee even. So. I like Matt Riddle. I like the whole bro storyline that's going I think they got a little bit more time with him as the tag titles right now. I just I would like to see him in the title picture, and I think they might do it if they're if they're planning on bumping him up to, to Raw or SmackDown. I think they got probably I would say they're probably another year left, and then they'll look at him maybe the end of the year. You figure right now he's a ta he's a, he's this uh, NXT tag champ. You figure that goes maybe two months. They'll turn they'll, those two will have a match against themselves for whatever reason why they broke up, but then. Maybe the fall, but I gotta imagine he's. I, I gotta imagine they're considering him for the, for the NXT Championship. He's relatively popular, extremely popular. He's very popular, yeah. From what I can tell, that's a fair. I point. mean, Dan, I'm being serious though. You definitely have to post that poll on Facebook. If what? you don't post it, I'm gonna have someone do it. I'll have Tom do it. What's the full highlight you want? What's the full poll? I want. Should Dan be allowed to wear Project Rock gear if he does not weight lift? Yes or no? What platform do you want it on? Is it a Facebook one? I want it. I just want Every it on platform. some platform, Every platform. The one that's going to get the highest reach. Every platform? I don't know. If I no, no, no. Just it. on the one that has the highest reach. That's all I care about. Probably Facebook. Um, all right. That's fair enough. We'll see. I'll put it out there. Well, what's, uh, what's saved the last two for next week? Um, I mean, right now, right now, I all I really want to talk about is the ending to AEW. I think that was the biggest thing that happened. 
across the board on any of the shows this week. What Do you was agree? So, well, what was so good about it? You told me it's this big What was ending. so good about it's it? So, I thought, like, all chaos was going to break loose. It did. Did it? Cody Rhodes did a backflip off of a 50-foot steel cage. I Have you not learned by now that I'm not a guy who over Mike, anim- pull up the highlight. Cody Rhodes flips off of a, a, of a cage. Put it on this side TV over here. I want I want Dan to watch this. I watched it. Climbed, okay, he climbs up a steel cage that's higher than WWE's by two. It's easily double the height. It's probably 30 to 40 feet in the air. Okay? He's facing Wardlow, some big guy that's MJF's plug or bodyguard or like, whatever. Right. Yeah. And... <clears throat> It's a big match. If, if Cody beats Wardlow, then he goes on to face MJF at Revolution. Cody's bleeding. It was a great match across the board, I thought. Co- goes up the goes up the cage. Decides to do a suicide dive backflip. One, two, three. Cody wins. He's now facing MJF at Revolution. The crowd's going wild. My jaw's on the floor. Dan is doesn't know what's going on because he doesn't understand chaos, I guess. He still wears the rock stuff, even though he doesn't weight lift. <laughs> Stop bringing that up. That's pretty high up. There. It was high, but like, have you not learned with me by now that I'm not one that appreciates or values the high moves? That, that doesn't get my. I like chaos. When you said a crazy ending, I'm like, oh wow, maybe, like, maybe all out chaos breaks out. Like it's just like all these rocks the come down. The guy risked his life. He literally would t- swan time bombed off. Well, didn't swan time bomb, but back flipped off of a cage. I want to see you backflip off of a 40-foot cage. Uh, first off, I wouldn't do it. So, I mean, that, that solves that problem right there. But the reality is I don't, I, I, I just don't think that was such a good of a move. I'm like, I don't think that was so crazy. I think it was a good move, but I'm not like, oh, wow. I wouldn't have texted and go, wow, that's an unbelievable ending. That, 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 that was a crazy, I thought you meant, like, all oh, hell broke loose. I would say it broke loose. He just jumped off of a 40-foot cage. That's not all hell breaking loose to win a match. I need to get a new PS2 control real bad. And I'll tell you, and I'm, I'm getting tired of the whole Arn Anderson and the Brandy Rhodes coming down and comforting Cody like it's some big... I'm getting tired of that whole... This whole, like, he's in the battle of his life. I mean, is he really in the battle of his life? I mean... It's driving me they're crazy. They're hyping it up a little bit. I mean, that's what wrestling is. is They exaggerate, obviously. I mean, he got this dude got ten lashings two episodes ago. Give the man a break, and then he does a backflip off of a forty foot cage. How many times do I have to say this to make you appreciate? I appreciate. Dan, no, no, Dan, Dan. Let me ask you this question: Did anything crazy like that happen on AEW or on NXT no. Raw or SmackDown? No. This might have been you. one of the most boringest weeks I think I've ever seen of out of out of, out of all and the that, shows. That's my point of it being crazy because I saw every one of those before I saw AEW. And I knew that that was the craziest moment of the week. I, and you're, you're sitting here not appreciating it. I would have been wow. That's here's how here's how I would have reacted. If I, here's how I would have reacted if I saw it before you. I would have go wow. That's a cool move. That was that, that was a good ending. I See, wouldn't have been like with, Tyler. That's, that's a, AEW just had a crazy ending. Oh my god. And like, that's that is the problem with wrestling fans. Fair. Put yourself in that guy's shoes. Fair. You do that. You put yourself in the shoes, do a backflip off of a cage to win the match, especially after getting lashed ten times with a belt. A I would point. say that's a crazy, and that's why I like AEW and I appreciate it because they're doing stuff way outside of the box compared to uh, Raw and SmackDown. I'm not going to say NXT because NXT I think puts on a way better show than those two in general as well. Fair point. All right, a couple quick topics before we close out: Samoa Joe suspended 30 days, wellness policy. That's a real shame. Hopefully, uh, Lay off the weed. I mean, that 30 days is just about WrestleMania time. Did uh, they did they say what he was on? I I, did, I just saw the headline that he got suspended 30 days. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, Raw. That's brought, Mike's cousin over there. <laughs> that's the one that looks like Mike. Uh, Raw brought in its biggest ratings uh, this Monday. So that, the Raw is up on the ups. Well, I mean it's. It's WrestleMania time, so you would think their, their numbers would be up. And real quick to close out this episode, Super Showdown Thursday. I expect anything big. Goldberg versus The Fiend. Discuss it. I mean, Goldberg, Goldberg speared The Fiend. We all know what happens when someone goes over on someone. I think The Fiend retains the title, obviously. 
I, I I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna tune in. I mean, I can't because I work at twelve o'clock in the in the afternoon on Thursday, so can't really tune in to watch it. But I'll I'll watch it when it's all said and done. And what about um? You got Roman Reigns and uh, Baron Corbin. Are you hoping like me now that this storyline is done after this one? I'm hoping that one of them uh, is stuck on the runway and can't make it, and they decide to just like change the whole entire match as a whole. Because I'm sick of this more than anybody. More probably, I'm sick of it just like everybody else is. Especially you. I mean, you talk about it every week. I so. hate it. It's just ridiculous. Uh, you got New Day versus Morris Morrison and The Miz. Do you think the New Day wins, keeps the titles, or loses it? New Day retains. You think so? To then to then face the Usos at WrestleMania. Do you think they're just gonna get rid of the Miz? And, or and they the could do uh, like they did when we went to WrestleMania and have maybe either a triple, a three-way or a four-way tag team. Add in the Street Profits, a little uh, you know NXT kind of sprinkle in there. It's a possibility. All right. So next week we got a couple more topics that we didn't get to this week. We'll debate about once again. And uh, Tyler on fire tonight. I think Tyler was just a little mad that I was shooting at him about the Hardys and Jericho. So I wanted to take it personal, I guess. Um, so we'll go, uh, we'll jump in We're going to more... put the poll on Facebook. Everybody go vote. Everybody tune in uh, to the No Look Podcast next. Uh, me and Austin are going to go in even deeper. But go vote on the poll. Should Dan be allowed to wear Project Rock gear if he does not weightlift? Now, Dan, if you decide to weightlift, I am all for it. But... If you decide to just only rock the Stairmaster and the treadmill, don't talk to me. Yeah. All right, Ring the Bell podcast uh, done for tonight. No look is up next. We got we got a full slate tonight. Dream Team is after them. Dave will close out tonight with the weekend Wednesday new show tomorrow night. Duty Call Hunt for Number One. OC Five X uh, Jordan Streamer joining the channel. He's live for his debut tomorrow night. Number seven, ranked seventh in wins in New York State in Fortnite. Pretty big deal. And we managed to get him. Go ahead, huh? Alright, guys, ring the bell. Adios. See you next week.